Need for Speed 2015 has a whole new meaning after today's news. In fact, Ken Block right here has the first daily challenge available right now, which is just crazy. I mean, it's a coincidence, obviously, but I reckon quite a few of the latest people playing this game are going to be jumping into the game to once again drive the Hoonicorn. I think this and Forza Horizon. But anyway, the whole point of today's video is to really discuss about the fact that, well, I had a chance to meet the guy and my experience and of course just driving the Hooney truck saying thank you to Ken Block. It's, he is one of the reasons a lot of us are into cars, whether that's a Jim Carna, the cars. In fact, he was in multiple games like the Dirt series and Need for Speed and his cars were in Forza shows how much like grip that that man had on just our minds when it came to drifting cars rally whatever i am pretty sure that this was one of the first experiences of ken blocks driving on youtube or on the internet that we remember unfortunately i can't show the whole thing because i will definitely be claimed but a hundred million people have seen this video for car videos that is insane. You have to once again excuse my shiny teeth. <laughs> I've changed my aligner, but this is the Hunicorn in Need for Speed. Now, it's not 100% accurate. It's been changed. It's been modified considering that there was glitches in how to modify and upgrade it. Of course, this thing had ridiculous amounts of power and I felt like it needed more. Just like Ken Block would have thought. So let's jump in and drive this beautiful, beautiful beast. It has been a little while since I've driven this, but it is easily the best car in the game for drifting and that just makes so much sense i actually had an experience of meeting ken block and honestly it was one of the coolest moments meeting some of the people behind obviously need for speed 2015 was when i experienced it and that makes sense as to why we're jumping into this game today. For those of you that didn't experience Need for Speed 2015, he was in the game, as you can imagine, as the drift-focused guy. He was the coolest drifter in town, and essentially, well, we got his Hoonicon, so. This is before they decided to go with, obviously, going to Forza with all the new stuff, which, to be fair, Forza has now a crazier selection of the cars. This was pretty much what we got. <laughs> so if you did play this game, you may remember there was an event right at the top of the map. I'm in prestige mode. I need to turn that off. <laughs> there it is. Mental block. And as you can see, it is an event dedicated to our boy. So as like I said, I actually had the experience of meeting him at Gamescom as part of this. He was there to help the team kind of promote the game Need for Speed 2015, which was just insane to think about. Like Ken Block, this man honestly probably was so confused as to why a bunch of sweaty gamers were like, hey, but can, I, can I have a picture with you, Mr. Ken Block? But clearly the man just cared and, and, and wanted to please the fans in the way and, that, and he loved it. He was down to experience pretty much anything and anyone related to cars. And the fact that I got to meet him just, it's its so strange now to be playing this and, and experiencing his car in 2015. And I think that is a huge, huge reason as to why they really need to update this game and make it so that we can play it offline. Not only that the servers are pooing themselves, but this game is now a piece of history, like hugely, and it, it already was, but the reasons keep growing, <laughs> unfortunately, in this case. Going back to this is so weird, though. Like, the handling is... You can tell it's still frostbite, like the physics, but... It's just, it's just odd. I really do wish, I was kind of hoping that we could potentially have this car in Unbound. Maybe it was still in the game files and we could unlock it some, somehow, but it seems like they've properly just gutted it, which is a damn shame, but obviously the licensing is the issue there. Forza was like, nah, give us exclusive. <laughs> give us a big offline patch because this game means so much more now. Considering he's had such an effect on so many different games, he's been on literally all of the big games of our times, if you really think about it. Need for Speed currently is like one of the biggest franchises. And then you've got, of course, Forza, which is now pretty huge on the Xbox side. And that's not forgetting Dirt when back in a time when there were so many damn games, like so many, and they just tried something new, all of them. I kind of missed that time. But ultimately, the fact is, if you've played any of those games, you'll know the guy. I think actually Dirt was probably my first introduction to the man himself. As to which then I went on to being a racing game content creator. I make videos driving game car games. It's, it's just, I feel like 
He's such a huge inspiration, you know? And I'm not even gonna sit here and lie. I, I was one of those that when I first watched those Jim Connors, I, I was, I, uh, it was incredible. Like I, I'd never seen anything really like it because <laughs> no one had the budgets like that. The man clearly truly lived <laughs> for sure. But being real, I did kind of towards the end, what was that? <laughs> become one of those where I was kind of like, after a while, the effect kind of wore up. You could see the, the lines of where he attempted to do it about 50 times before they got the shot. But it doesn't take away really fully from the magic because it, it, it is just crazy. I don't even know what I hit there. <laughs> Why is there to hit game? Man, these physics. Oh, you see that? It was like sliding on its own. I did not tell you to slide to the right like that. What are you doing? And I gotta say, I hate this section with all my my hate that is possible. What are they? Why are they? What are they? What? He's doing reverse donuts. Is that AI or a player? Let's get into my interaction with the block man himself. Honestly, it was... <laughs> let's be... I'm gonna be completely honest. He looked confused and like out of his depth. Now, granted, he was over in Cologne, this was. This was so quite a bit away from his home and i know that jet lag plays a massive game in my mood and everything as well but it just felt the man was almost a little bit out of his depth and the fact that he put himself in that position for the sake of us is is really freaking cool like that man could have been doing a million other things that day but he came down to gamescom across the planet <laughs> to, to to a games conference to see a bunch of sweaty gamers like us that are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I used to watch your Jim Kana, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the man, honestly, he, he wasn't super sociable. And I think that's absolutely fair. And I, even I, with a, a couple hours jet lag, I feel, I feel the pain. I've been to LA a bunch of times and back that way, I, I just kind of zone out sometimes. But considering, again, it was such a, a, probably a different experience for him compared to what he's like used to. I get it. Like, you, you, it's just almost you can't process what the heck is going on. He didn't come across as the most confident person in the world. Like you, you'd think he kind of was, but clearly he was just there for the love of driving. I think that's really cool to see because a lot of the time, most people, I feel like in this industry, the gaming industry, which I have knowledge of, there's so much kind of just, just everyone seems to think everyone has to be the exact same way. I've kind of spoken about this before. Everyone has to be massively confident. Everyone has to be super excitable. He was kind of chill. And that was a really nice experience. As someone that is also quite in, in person, like more to myself, not super, oh my God. It was refreshing to see. And uh, I, I hope that the people that he met kind of understood that and i don't know how many of you guys may have also had the possibility to meet him as well but if you had how did you find him obviously he may have been considering he was jet lagged <laughs> maybe, maybe your experience was a little a little bit different i cannot get a hold of this handling it is so weird i think we have to do this one as well angels can catch devils that's ugh. like you know when it has nothing to do with what's going on but your brain just kind of links it <laughs> it goes no 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 this this is linked. <laughs> 170,000? I got this. Let's get it. In the Hoonicon. I really wish there was a Hooney truck in Need for Speed. Especially now, because if anything, the drifting is more real than it was ever. Like, this game is still <laughs> really weird. I, st I will never get used to this handling model ever again. <laughs> I know a lot of the other Need for Speed game changers from back in the day will uh, we'll definitely remember this this experience. I was going through my camera as well, just to, because normally I upload, I, I have Google, I use Google Photos to, to, to keep everything. And I've got photos from back like 10 plus years ago. And it's really cool to have, but I, I have none from Gamescom. I took no photos. I was so out of my own depth myself. Oh, what a machine. Oh my goodness. But it's one of those that every game you play, someone has created his car or livery in the game as close as possible even if the car isn't in the game people make it on a modern mustang people make it on a, a, a newer mustang people convert any truck they can find into the hooney truck honestly I, my, one of my favorite moments with this car or with the the hoonicorn cars was when the car was chained and he was doing an all-wheel burnout with that thing that was insane oh my god what that was crazy honestly going back to this as well one of the <laughs> 
in the events, the collisions are just all over the place. I've got to say, it's quite interesting in that when, uh, at this time, the collisions in, in Frostbite and Battlefield were really weird. Like, it was when you hit something, it took about 20 seconds for it to destroy. And obviously, that was probably mostly netcode and stuff. But this is always online as well. They must have managed to speed up the physics, if you will, which is pretty cool. You almost think celebrities like that are invincible. Okay, I remember waking up for the Kobe stuff, the Paul Walker stuff. This. And you think, no, 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 no. There's no way. Because I remember back in the day of hearing of Sean Kingston and people like that passing away. And you're like, nah. Back in the day of Facebook, I actually believed it all. <laughs> but nowadays, I'm so skeptical. I have to see multiple sources confirm what is going on. And unfortunately, this one actually did happen. What I will say is I'm probably going to forever avoid all snow sports because that is insane. The stuff already terrified me. But if someone like that, I, it, it just do, it, it doesn't make sense. They're invincible, right? They're, 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 the man was, I thought I was like, the man's not more than what, 50, is he? And you find out the reason why, and in case you didn't know, it was on a snowmobile accident. Anyway, it was a bit of a different one today, but I just wanted to remember him, create this video to, 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 to put a pin in the time. And you know, some people might not know, and some people might, not have the uh, the confirmation but this is this is his place this is his car rest in peace to ken block thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace